Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another segment of ASAF Cafe. I am your host, ASAF Adonai, and um, before I start this program, I just want to let everybody know that next Thursday will be our 100th episode of this show. Fascinating. ASAF Cafe. I am very humbled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. And so, good Lord willing, we'll be doing it uh, next Thursday. See, technically, I've been doing two shows a week, right? All right, all right. So, um... I'll put 99 and 100 together and just call it 100 and just make it a two-hour special. Fascinating. So tune in next week, ladies and gentlemen, and, and we're going to have a look back in time and show some really early ASAP cafes. That'll be fascinating. Yeah, it will be fun. So on my immediate right, our <coughs> special guest is Steve Zeiler. Did I pronounce that right? Good. I'm glad I pronounced that right. As Steve's going to do some playing the piano for us in a little bit here, and uh, he'll talk to you about his projects and some of the things that's going on in his life. And uh, we have another regular on my left that has been here for a while, the lovely Teresa Toygo is here. Mm -hmm. And uh, officially our aging rocker Emmett on my further left. So yep. <laughs> yep. you guys know each other, right? Yep. Steve, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. And so on. Uh, great. Oh, so nice. this will be uh, fun here. I'm just checking one other final thing. I'll know when to stop. So let me uh, start up with Santa Lucia just to get the mood started. Yeah. And then I'll focus on you, and then we'll make the transition to for you to play. You just take as much time. Uh, we'll do this for almost a whole literal hour, this particular mm -hmm. show. So it gives you plenty of time. When the hand gets on the six, that's when I'll have to wind it down. So that's plenty of time there. I didn't say that right, did yeah. I? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So anyway, um, you want to start us off, start up, start us off, in? Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. Bless our time together, O oh God, in Jesus' name. And on that note, let's start off with Santa Lucia. I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> Gomer Pyle, yeah. I never really watched Gomer Pyle, yeah. Interesting. Oh, thanks for the water. I was kind of thirsty. There's some treats, too. Wonderful, thanks. You, you, uh, oh, thanks. A yeah, thank you. Version of this song. Such a neat song, song you know? Mm hmm I learned this style that I have here. I was trained to do this. Mm -hmm. I forgot to bring my book. Don't worry about it. We can talk about it if you want. You've never signed it. Okay. <laughs> I'll do it for you next time. And uh, <laughs> that's kind of a classical style. Mm -hmm. Like I like to take all the popular songs and make them sound like classical music. Mm -hmm. I was trained how to do that because normally, and I've demonstrated this before, but I don't think you've ever seen like, seen this. But when you do like say, I left my heart in San Francisco, they might do something like this. I'm sorry. You know, it's kind of plain. And there's nothing wrong with that. Or the girl from Ipanema. Oh, I love this song. Yep. Something like this, eh? And there's nothing wrong with that style. That's your traditional style when people play in piano mm -hmm. bars. They mm -hmm. kind of play everything kind of straight, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. And so I just, with the help of a good teacher, Marshall Coswell, put a little notes in there. Something like this, eh? Something like that, mm -hmm. see? Yeah, so, <laughs> so um, good. Teresa, you've been with us before, so I'm going to focus more on Stephen. Feel free to ask uh, Steve any questions. First, I want to ask you a couple of questions just so the audience can know a little bit about you. Where are you from? Well, I lived on the East Coast growing up. What part of the East Coast? Maryland. Okay, because I have family in um, New York, oh, okay. so I have a familiarity with the East Coast. Do you have any brothers and sisters? i got a brother in D.C. and a sister in D.C. Excellent, okay. And uh, how long have you been living in Montana and in Missoula? 
I've been living in Missoula. It's the only place I've lived in Montana, and I've been here a little over 13 years. 13 years? Mm -hmm. How do you like it here in um, Missoula? No, oh, I love it. Yeah, me too. I, I left the big city to come to the smaller city. It's a, it's a place <laughs> you can call home right away? Yeah, I know. I, I really like it here. Let me do something for you. Tell me if you know this song. Oh, I'm not really good at music trivia. So I'll do it again. Yeah, no, I've heard it. I just, I'm not really good at music trivia. Mm -hmm. But I bet Teresa knows. I know the song, but I can't think of the name. All right, Emmett, you want to help That's him out? Swinging Safari. That's called Swinging Safari. Yep. Yeah. It, it's, it's not a very technical song, it's a cute little song. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a uh, famous um, band leader that passed named Burt Kempfer made that song famous. And they called him the hit maker because what he used to do is create all these fun little songs. Mm -hmm. They weren't very technical, but they were fun and they were delightful songs, like light classical music. Yeah. And uh, he would introduce them on television and they became instant hits. Mm -hmm. Every song that man ever did was a big hit mm -hmm. in the 60s. Burt Kemford, so you yeah. can look him up sometime. He just, yeah. that's what they called him, hit maker. Mm -hmm. Every, everything that man ever touched turned to gold. He just came out with hit after hit. He had like little elaborate orchestras in the background, right? And stuff like mm -hmm. that. It was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's get back to you for a moment, Steve. Um, did you do it? Uh, were you a student at the university at all? Mm -hmm. No, I went to school years ago at the University of Maryland. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I've never actually been to Maryland, but uh, New York's about as close to that state as I've gotten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And um, how have you been lately, Teresa? Fantastic. I am glad to hear that. Yesterday I... was the best day of my life. What happened yesterday? Oh, I, I wrote down in my journal like 10 things. Um, well, I'm working at Secret Seconds and I, I got to help out this homeless lady. I got to donate some stuff to the women's shelter. I said goodbye to my therapist. <laughs> I'm done with therapy. Okay. Um, oh, and the day before I rode on a Harley. Wow. Cool. Yeah. This is called Manana. That's called Manana. Um, you know, before they had the political correct movement, the lady that introduced that song got a lot of heat for it oh, at yeah. the time. And this was before the political correct movement, which I thought was a little silly. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, Peggy Lee is the big band singer. I don't know if you ever heard of her. She was mm -hmm. a famous singer in the past. She introduced that song to the world back in the 1940s. It's called Manana. And it's basically about this uh, guy that just was cooking chili and he let the chili burn the house down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they had that little accent. So mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. she got a little heat for that one there. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it was, it's just such a fun, delightful song. Mm -hmm. Now, um, anything you can think to ask? Steve? Yes, I'm going to have um, him play here in a, in a moment. So, um, what is your favorite type of music? M one of mine is easy listening as well as punk rock. Do you have you ever do you like easy listening like Lawrence Welk or anything or what? Or? Um, it, it, I think it varies day to day and in the mood. I, yeah, some of these styles generally it's an emotional connection. The same here with me. Or I uh, analyze the music in a way and see if I can figure out a rhythm or an arrangement that I want. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd kind of go into that, but it could be just about any style, and I'll, Interesting. I'll find something about it that um, draws me in. It could yep. be pop or classical or new age, yeah. or jazz or, yeah, or yeah. Something, blues, any yeah. genre really, reggae, mm -hmm. uh, Hawaiian. So you basically like all kinds of music. Yeah, I, I really don't have a, a wall up against too many types of music. It's just, I'm trying to really be open-minded about the possibilities of music. Mm -hmm. Evolve into different genres. I mean, mm -hmm. okay, it's, yeah. a, it's amazing to me how we can have new music continually mm -hmm. with so many fixed amount of notes. Okay, well, my final question before we switch the um, roles. Oh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Tell me about your piano history. Uh, how old were you when you started playing the piano? I played from age six to age thirteen. Okay. And it took few decades off. Well, I've heard you play, and I think you play extremely well. well that's really flattering, because I, I did, took, I took 30 years off, and so I came back to it, and 
But did you take any? Uh, did you ever take any uh, formal piano lessons as a child? Yeah, from six to thirteen. Six to thirteen. Okay, you took There's lessons. More, more um, memorization of pieces for recitals. Okay, so you studied a little bit of the classics at that time, or yeah, was it? Yeah, and I can't even recall. They weren't the, the classics that were popular. They were just all different popular songs. Yeah, it was very unique songs that I remember my recitals. Okay, being and you took that unique. time off, and then you just you got back into it. Yeah, right, pretty took much. That, yeah. That well, that's time. cool. Yeah. I got back well, on that note, we're gonna switch, and I'm gonna sit where you are, and uh, okay. Then I have these notes here written out, and you can. That was just for my own sake, but you can um, introduce the songs and okay. talk about your YouTube video and give the audience here the information mm -hmm. you want, and just take your time. Okay. So let's just switch. Oh. This is kind of cool because. This is only like the second or third time I get to sit on my own show and have someone else play. So. Interesting, yeah. <clears throat> I will be a guest. Can you hand me that water there? Sure. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll let Steve take over, and uh, you just can introduce your song and say anything. Just that second camera to the audience yeah. there before you play, and just take over. Well, this is a piece that I've been working on for a few years, and. Okay. Um, I put it to some pictures that I've taken on a, in a YouTube video uh, okay. a little over a month ago. Okay. And if you wanted to find that video on YouTube, you could type in the word uh, Benjamination. Well, I'll spell and that, Benjamination. That's spelled B-E-N-J-A-M-A-J-I-M-A-G. I'm sorry, M-A-G. <sighs> I N A T I O N. Just leave out the letter I when you put the word imagination, right? Think of the, the first part of the name Benjamin, Benja. Yeah. And Benja. the last part of the word imagination, imagination. So Benja, imagination. Even well, why don't we have you, know you spell that um, just to uh, make sure that's clear? B E N J A M A G I N A T I O N. Okay. Opus one. You know Benja, imagination, opus one. You and know what when I they. Thought it was? I thought it was Ben, like Jam, like Jam. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The letter J. I'm sorry, it's a letter. It's a G. Oh. So if they if they look that up on YouTube, they, they can see the song that you're about to play. Yeah. All right, take it away, Steve. Anything else you want to say real quick before you start playing? Anything that the audience should know? Um, this music that I play has come from the love I have for my son, and I don't know if I would even be here if I hadn't tried to convey that love through piano one day. And How old is your son right now? He just turned five. Good. Aww. All right, well, go ahead, Steve. Have fun. <clears throat>
excellent. Excellent. Oh, thank you. So that you know that makes me think of. Um, <clears throat> That might be something they might use in a dental office when you're waiting for yes. the dentist to come or you're yeah. in a hospital room and you just listen to something relaxing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank That's you. one interpretation of it. Yeah. Thank and you. then I was thinking, well, this is kind of crude, but like Bach, you know, how his, he had like a lot of repetitions in some mm -hmm. of his well, works. Yeah. Well, thank you. I've it's, it's, anytime you compare me to Bach, that's quite flattering. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> that's, that's just that was just what I was thinking. No. I liked it. Well, I mm -hmm. really liked it. Well, what did you think, Evan? Yeah, I very much liked it. It kind of reminded. I mean, have, have you ever heard of Philip Glass? He was kind of a new I, age artist. Actually, I play misinterpretations of Philip Glass. It, misinterpretations? That's my theme. I play misinterpretations of Beethoven and misinterpretations of Coldplay and misinterpretations. Of Interesting. Philip Glass. Yeah. But, but yeah, this is no, really. I, I'm influenced by his. Minimalist type. Of I position. thought so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but I this so. isn't really what you would call new age. It's just kind of relaxing music, uh, right? You know what? I don't know how to describe it. Well, I'm not a fan of new age music, but I do like this song here. But everybody has a different. The name of the piece, Bench Imagination Opus One, is a concept, but the specific name of that piece is called Hummingbird Sonata. Hummingbird Sonata. So I try to you think of the, yeah, think of uh, birds. But you said in, that you wrote this song basically for your son. Did I understand that correctly? Well, it comes through the, the love for my son has been channeled into this piece of music. Okay. And when I played this piece of music publicly in Missoula, mm -hmm. somebody noticed that day and changed my life. Mm -hmm. Well, um, have you, and you, obviously you've played this song before in public then, haven't you? Right. I played for the Missoula Rotary Club a, a few years ago. The same composition you did just, just now? Just the, the first five minutes of it. Okay, and first, this is first something movie. like eight minutes. Well, that was yeah. very nice. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. It, 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 I liked it. Yeah. It's a different... Uh, I was thinking comparing styles, and you know, you should never compare styles of piano players. That's why I call it uh, uh, interpretation. I really liked it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I, because I really appreciate that. It's not that I'm not looking, it's just I'm kind of focused on the audience, but no. yeah, I really... Hello, audience. Mm -hmm. I liked it. So let's make sure we got that. That's, that's called Opus, it's Opus One. Binge Imagination Opus Binge One. Imagination Opus One. And the name of the song is called Hummingbird Sonata. Mm -hmm. Right. All right, cool. And I think there's a little story about some of the emotions that went into it when you go to YouTube, and I think I mentioned Hummingbird Sonata mm -hmm. as the particular title of that. Okay. So it's a concept of work. I'm going to be working on Opus Two today, and then when they're all complete, um, how many songs are you are planning on putting together? You think? Well, I, I'm going to have them in sections. So this next one will be its own, and then I might have a medley for the next Opus. Well, they do it with classical music. They'll have like an Opus, and you know, like right, Opus right. One, Opus Two, right. and then they'll put like say three movements in the same song. Right. So are you thinking of doing something like that? Like uh, write a bunch of songs, put them together, and just Lump well, it into one song, maybe? Actually, I have the piece already recorded from this studio. Okay. And then we're putting images, photography, to those recordings, one opus at a time. Oh, So okay. it's kind of building into an eventual stream of piano that's about 50 minutes. Oh, okay, I see. Well, that's interesting. So well, at yeah, least you to, gave to be, uh, to be people... Continued. Yeah, like, same bat time, same, same bat channel. Bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> well, at least you gave, uh, gave us a little preview. Well, big preview in the cafe today so Thank you. I really appreciate the time you guys can look him up and you're gonna be taken off here pretty soon aren't you? I, I'm actually going into the other studio to try and do some production on the next video so. well what you could do is walk behind this tower here and I'll just take over and finish talking with Emmett and Teresa and oh okay thanks for uh, yeah. playing Thank actually you. it would be on soundscapes if, if you do get charter soundscapes is 942. Yeah, actually, I've heard that station. I like that. I one. like it. That's technically New Age. So technically, you are. New Age really isn't like crystals or anything. You know, a lot of it is piano or soft guitar. Yeah. That is absolutely beautiful. Well, song. I don't see this as New Age. It just kind of it had a little flavor, but I really liked it. You know, I, I don't think Steve's intent was necessarily New Age. I don't know. No. I didn't even know what my category. I didn't know. You know, it sounds good. It's kind of. I would put this under a classical, easy listening category, just so you can get yeah. a bigger audience uh -huh. in case there's someone who's not comfortable, say, with New Age because of the crystals and things. Well, yeah. I play, I play for know. assisted living. So I, this one assisted living center every Monday, and I, this style of music seems to be of a soothing yeah, concept for the folks who don't get much stimulation. So. Well, I know it's your your composition, but if I were in your shoes, I would put it under a light classical yeah. category yeah, instead of I a New so. Age category. Just. Uh -huh. Just to reach a, a bigger audience in sure. case there's 
uh, people aren't comfortable with New Age. Right. Not because no, the I can respect that. New Age is bad necessarily. It's just this, some of the things that's associated with that is why people get nervous. Yeah. So I don't know why that. they call it even they, New Age they, music when it really is like modern acoustic, modern classical, yeah, like I George think Winston. Be, I think it would be an insult to call this song New Age. I really do. Yeah. I, I think it would be very insulting. Well, I, it's just, you know, I'm, I've listened to so much of that music, like like on soundscapes, that it is that style, like George Winston. Mm -hmm. Yeah, George well, he's, Winston. A fine, he's a fine musician. Exactly, and that, he would be cl technically classified under, the, you know, it, a soundscapes, New Age type music, technically, you know. Because no, it's okay, all that yeah. type of, you know, it's not just whistles or, you know, middle, um, you know Eastern music. No, it's a very... Very, I'd call it more, more modern acoustic music. You know, yeah. more, you know, you know, like soundscapes used to be on Easy One or Two, that kind of thing. Well, you Teresa, know. what did you think of that song? Oh, it's very moving, especially when you see it on YouTube. Yeah, well, well um, so the images, you've seen the video. Okay. Yeah. Well, Steve, you're going to get a copy of this episode today that you might can use for. Uh, like I sent to my mother. Yeah, okay. I love you, mom. Yeah, you can look in that camera and say hi to your mother. I love you, mom. I love you, dad. <laughs> you heard that, mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, um, I mean, you could use use this episode as a demonstration. I'm gonna have it on YouTube in about a couple mm -hmm. hours from now, and okay, I'll make a DVD well, thank version. And thank you so feel much. Feel free to make more copies, and I mean, because the way you played that, just without the video, just the mm -hmm. song itself, I think could make a great resume or presentation or something or I don't know. Well maybe when I finish Opus 2 that's a 12 minute song and I could demonstrate that sometime in the future. Perhaps, you, yeah. If, okay. if you like. Yeah, well keep that in mind. Okay. But I did like this song. Any mm -hmm. last uh, words before because I know Steve has to go. I uh, Congratulations on your 100th. That's yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're going to be doing it. I'll yeah, finish interviewing. Good to see you again. Yeah. Great to meet you. Yeah. yeah. Well Steve, you. thank you for thank playing you. that. I appreciate it. How kind of you. All right, well, I'll just entertain you two. We still got about 15 minutes left. Fascinating. Wow, you did lower the seat. I want Steve to talk about the Seinfeld show. If you want to talk about Seinfeld, we can talk about Seinfeld. We still got about 15, 20 minutes. It's really funny to talk about. Sure, all right. Well, we'll talk about, let's, let's get an intro of Seinfeld here. Thanks, Steve. He can talk about it next time he's on. Thank you. Bye. No, we can talk about it right now. Let's do an intro. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the intro to Seinfeld. Oh, oh. Yeah, I've never cared for Seinfeld myself. I never thought wow. it was funny. It was kind of a silly show, but it, it worked. Very silly. Yeah, it was a show about nothing. Really. nothing. Yeah. That was their concept. I yeah. mean, that's not a show that you can necessarily watch and go home and say, well, this episode was about such and such and such and such. It just kind of. Yeah, like, I'm surprised it became yeah. such a good, a big hit for so many people. I never laughed, you know. Just... Interesting. What do you think of that show? It's one of my favorites. Oh. <laughs> you want to talk about Seinfeld? Go for mm -hmm. it. Is it any particular? Oh, well, well um, like S Steve and I were talking about um, something that you would enjoy, an episode with a character named Kramer. I'm familiar with his character. All right, he finds this furniture like in a dumpster or something, and it's the it's it's the it's the set that they used on the is it Mike Douglas? Oh, I think I saw that episode when he was uh, I forget the show, but uh, he found the set to a talk show or something. Right, and okay. he has he has a he brings in all of his friends. And has him sit, interviews him. Oh, yeah. I did see that particular episode. Yeah. yeah. I did see that one. He was like Johnny Carson. He yeah, found, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. found the table and the desk, mm -hmm. and he brought it into his home. So when his friends came over, it was like they were on a talk show. Yeah. I uh -huh. did see that episode. Uh, I didn't see many of them. So, like, you know. Well, Seinfeld was. I don't want to pick on the Seinfeld fans because yeah. I know that works for them. I didn't watch that show all the time, but I did see some. Episodes I thought was pretty amusing, mm -hmm. and that particular one was kind of funny. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine going to someone's house and you're sitting there being interviewed? <laughs> he's got an yeah. a, a, a interview table in his living room, mm -hmm. and he's sitting at the desk like Johnny Carson, and you and you come over and visit, and you're a guest yeah, amazing, in yeah. his house. It was, it, it was mm -hmm. kind of amusing. Really amusing. So is that your favorite show? Yes. Mm. 
You have a favorite show, Emmett? I, it's hard to say. I think one of my favorite shows was Battlestar Galactica, or Star Trek. Kind of a tie between Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica. The old one from uh -huh. the 70s. Yeah. Speaking of Battlestar Galactica, I think I, well, I, I maybe never told you the story. I uh, got invited to play at an organization called the Jeffrey Foundation in California years mm -hmm. ago, and they had these children that had mental disabilities and physical disabilities and stuff at the time. And this is in the heyday when Battlestar Galactica was popular. You remember the Cylons? Mm -hmm. with the yes, red yes. Red eye that would go across? Yeah. Well, they had these little guys in robot costumes at the uh, Universal Studios tour when they were giving a tour of the show. And so you could see their eye Whoa. going across, little red <laughs> And of course, these little they were these were just children, mm -hmm. sweet little kids. But from their point of view, they thought the Cylons were real as we were going wow. through uh, the tours, and they got freaked out. And it was yeah, it was just so sad and humbling to try to explain to these yeah. children that were terrified and crying, "Mommy, you know that this wasn't real." Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. But it's because of their mental challenges. So mm -hmm. nobody stopped to think that from their point of view would be. Yeah. Really frightening, and it was. They were crying and scared, Amazing. hanging on, and well. but, you know, we just had to comfort these kids. I don't know. This is just a ride. It's not real, and mm -hmm. they calmed down. Mm -hmm. But man, those Cylons that they had, they had those black outfits, oh, yeah, and, yeah. and this little red dot was yeah. going across their visor, like yeah. <laughs> what? A Cylon? Yeah, Cylons. Cylons yeah, yeah. Battlestar Galactica. They were robots. Right? They were created by a lizard-like race of beings on another. Another planet, a galaxy far away, kind of, but they were robots. They wanted to destroy all humanity. They wanted to destroy. They hated humans. They wanted to destroy all humanity. That's how pretty much it happened. They're the the twelve tribes of something, or there were these twelve lost tribes of these planets. They were wiped out by the Cylon Empire. There was huge space battle, but there were these battle stars, huge um, battle crews named battles called battle stars that would you know you know protect basically the various home worlds in another galaxy and. Basically, they got wiped out, and the last survivor, um, you know, the last Battlestar, Battlestar Galactica, they were able to get the survivors of humanity onto these ships, whatever they could carry, to f try and find the 13th um, world, Earth. That there are a lot of, you know, they might be humans, they might have technology to defeat the Cylons. So that was, that was basically Battlestar Galactica, and it had lasers, and it had space wars, and it was, it was, it was a crazy show, that Battlestar. I Star loved Star. it. I have all the episodes on tape, yeah. The whole, whole almost, series. yep, yep, I do. It was fascinating. It was Perfect fast. song to play when you're talking about Battlestar Galactica. And the excellent music, you know, fantastic yeah, music. Yeah. And Lauren Green, the actor, was the uh, star of the yeah. Bonanza. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, he, yeah. he was the, wasn't he the commander? Or yes, he was. That, uh, show? Yeah. yeah. Commander I, Dama. I want to play something. Tell me if you know this song. And, and you probably know, so let's see if she can figure it out. comes out with a samurai sword <laughs> and and the character of the show just pulls up this gun and goes yeah. and wasted him. A samurai? Um, yeah, he he's like he had this big samurai sword. That's I was a hint. thinking it I was thinking it was something western. It I'm had a western sure. flavor. Okay. I'll do it again. The Lost Art, oh, Harrison Ford. Okay. <laughs> you recognize it now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. That's my version of that song. I uh -huh. remember uh, taking my daughter to see that at 
Yeah, yeah. then uh, boy, it's amazing. What is that about thirty years old? Yeah, yeah it is about yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I remember the first time when I saw that scene when that guy, oh, yeah. that warrior, came out with that sword. Oh, yeah, I was thinking, what that... is Indiana Jones going to do now? How's he going to get out of this one? Yeah. And he just pulls out this gun and just shoots the guy. Well, yeah. And walks away. It was so amusing. It, yeah, it was. It, it, just the way that scene came across. Yeah. You know? And I'm not advocating shoot so well, but that scene, just, you couldn't help but laugh. Yeah, was, yeah. He was in a pickle. I mean, he was going to get his head cut off by this guy. Yeah. <laughs> And then the special effects on that yeah. show for yeah. then. Mm -hmm. For that really, time, yeah. yeah. But they had a lot of science fiction shows in that time. Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. Space 1999 came before that. Yeah, that was excellent. And, yeah. Um, um, oh, gosh. Then they had what Star Wars came out in that time, too, didn't it? Yeah, 1977. Yep. Yeah. Do, you, do you know what year that battle, mm -hmm. uh, not Battlestar, um, Raiders of the Lost Ark came out. Didn't that come out around that time, too? You know, it came out a little later, like 1983 or 84. I can't remember. 1983, I think. Uh-huh. Because um, Raider, the second Raiders of the Lost Ark, um, the second came out in 1984, so I'm thinking 1982, 83. I can't remember. Okay. This comes out before. Okay, I know this song. It's on a uh, channel 103 called Sprout TV. It's just Sprout mostly, TV? yeah, it's mostly for toddlers. But I thought, what is up with this uh, toddler uh, TV? This is wonderful. They have the sweetest cartoons, mo a lot of them from Canada. But they have one called Caillou. It's often been on PBS. Okay. It's just a sweet cartoon education for little kids about a four-year-old who just does regular four-year-old things like goes to, goes to play school or learns how to make pizza or has friends over. And it's just the most innocent family-friendly show that you've ever seen. It's just like for five minutes each, but they're so sweet, just uh -huh. totally innocent and like, this This is so wonderful and so innocent and just very inspiring, I think, you know. Uh, you I've know, never heard of that. It's wonderful. Oh. It's is wonderful. that similar to Me TV? No, uh, Sprout TV is like for uh, kindergartners. Okay. Uh, preschoolers, you know. I think it's just a wonderful... Uh, they've taken off a lot of my favorite shows like Poppycat or the Wiggles, which they were a, a, a song and dance trio from Australia. They've taken off a lot of the good stuff. So it stuff. sounds like it's more foreign uh, type. It is. It is a lot of. Show. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of uh, children's show, the only one I'm familiar with is uh, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. Have you mm. ever heard of her? Oh, uh, you told me about her. I'm not really familiar. I've never the seen. Actress Jean Stapleton played mm -hmm. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. She's, of course, best known for playing Edith Bunker on Bunker. Mm -hmm. All in the Family. But she was Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, and her husband was James Whitmore. Mm -hmm. But she never saw him because he was always at sea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she had like these little pictures of Mr. Piggle Wiggle. And it was a fun show, similar to what you're talking yeah. about. Maybe it reached a little older children because they yeah. were, they would always have these um, mm -hmm. episodes of teaching kids how to tell the truth. Yeah, yeah. Or take a bath. Mm -hmm. It was talking about that bath one. They had this girl, her name was Charlie, mm -hmm. they called her. And of course they had famous stars on, on mm -hmm. that, like Egg Bagley. He was in this episode with little Charlie. And Charlie was like this seven-year-old kid that didn't want to take a bath, right? Mm -hmm. So Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, she gets permission from Charlie's parents to teach her how to take a bath. So what they did was they put fertilizer on this kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> put her clothes on and everything. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle puts fertilizer on the kid. Then they put seed on her. And they, they water her like a flower. <laughs> <laughs> And then these flowers start sprouting up, right, <laughs> around the kid. And she still didn't want to take a bath because the idea was to get the mud off her, uh -huh. get the flowers. And finally, after a week later, her parents come to Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's house, and they see their kid like this human bush, you know, just yeah. had uh, weeds all over and flowers all over her kid. Look, mommy, I don't have to take a bath. Uh -huh. And so the parents freaked out, but at yeah. the end, this kid learns that lesson about getting clean because... Mm -hmm. It got to the point where it wasn't fun having all that mm -hmm. 
fertilizer on her. Mm -hmm. But she goes, Mommy, can I take a bath? So mm -hmm. they go and give the kid a bath. They don't show it on camera, obviously, but then she comes out. She looks like a cute little girl with her pigtail. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it wasn't animated then. No, it, yeah, they were oh, real what? people. This is real people. Real people. Yeah, and Jean Stapleton was Mrs. Pickle. She had this unusual mm -hmm. outfit with striped stockings, and she had this talking tree that was 500 years old. <laughs> <laughs> And the tree was sitting in her living room like this, mm -hmm. and it had like a face sticking out, and it, it just, it was just the cutest cartoon uh, oh, or wow. children's show to get to see it. Mm -hmm. Then they had this other episode of Mrs. Piggle Wiggle where they were teaching this kid how to tell the truth and stop telling whoppers, right? Mm -hmm. They call it whoppers. <laughs> yeah. So to teach this boy to tell the truth, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle gives him a a backpack. Mm -hmm. Every time this kid tells a whopper, this big rock falls out of the sky. She catches it, and then they put it in the backpack, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and finally, the, this kid had told so many whoppers that he had his whole backpack, his big mm -hmm. rocks, was getting all heavy and everything. He's like, I'm fine. It's my story, and uh, I'm sticking to it. And he yeah. was like really miserable because it was like 50 pounds on this kid and all these rocks because he wouldn't tell the truth. And finally, um, they had a scene where they had what was called chicken, it, it, was, it was a pie, it was chicken hot sauce mm -hmm. pie, chicken tuna um, hot sauce pie, something like that, and it tastes really bad. I mean, uh, it, like looked, it looked really yikes on the, on the camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this boy said, yeah, I made this pie myself and it's my favorite pie in the world. That boy, was his nose would have grown 10 feet long because he knew he didn't like it. So Mrs. Pickle goes, oh, well, let me try your pie. And right when she's about to take a piece of the pie, goes, no, 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 I lied. I, I made it. I didn't make the pie. I didn't make any of this. And he, he said he was sorry for all the fibs he told. And then the rocks just came off the mm -hmm. boy. And then he, he likes, he started like and telling the truth. Yeah, go ahead. It's just yeah. such a fun show. Yeah, you yeah. Need to see it, Mrs. Pickle mm -hmm. It's just a fun show. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, the first time I saw that show. And uh, I was like, this is good. Mm -hmm. I, my first thought was, oh, yawn, not another Captain Kangaroo. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm picking on Captain Kangaroo. He was five, but yeah. no, this is a fun mm -hmm. show. If you ever get to see it, Mrs. Piggle um, Wiggle. My favorite um, kid's show, I think it's it's uh, good for adults, too. What's that? Um, the Pee Wee, Pee Wee Playhouse. Oh, I remember it. Yeah, I have um, yeah. some. I have some of those episodes in my collection. Chair. Yeah, I never liked that show. I couldn't get into it for some reason. Yeah. That's with Pee Wee Herman, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, that was a fine children's show. And uh -huh. what I liked about that show was um, it was modern mm -hmm. for its time. Yeah. Because if you, if you want to get technical, see, when I was a little boy, all the television shows for children, they had, well, Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chop was right. fun. Mm -hmm. Sherry Lewis was young, you know. When you think Sherry Lewis, you think of the older Sherry with the curly red hair, mm -hmm. right? When I was a little boy, her hair was way down to her back at that time. Yeah. Black and white, and she still had the red hair. And um, Charlie Horse, the characters Charlie Horse, Hush Puppy, and Lamb Chop, they were really primitive socks. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was fun to watch that show. And I used to watch that show, and then my mom would send me off to school after mm -hmm. watching uh, Sherry Lewis. And they had a lot of children's shows like um, Captain Kangaroo. This is this way before Mr. Rogers. They had Captain Kangaroo. They had Oakla, uh, a Kukla Fran and Ollie. Oh, yeah. And they had, um, of course, Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chop. And there was this one show, I can't remember, I think it was Romper Room. Do you remember that? My sister was on Romper Room. Oh. Well, what was, was fun about Romper Room, this lady had, they called it a magic mirror, really, you know? Mm -hmm. And she would put it up to her face, Miss, and she would, Miss she would Julie. name, yeah, and she would name names of children, like, say, mm -hmm. um, Michael, and, you know, just names. Before she go, she named about twenty or thirty names. You know, hi, hi, Michael, mm -hmm. hi, uh, mm -hmm. whoever, mm -hmm. Teresa, hi, Karen, hi, this and that, right? Mm -hmm. And they never said my name, but yeah. <laughs> well, it was ASAP back then. No, but still, they never said my name. So I used to, and they used to watch that just to see if they would always say my Aww. name, and they yeah. never did. Yeah, I never saw her on her room. Don't remember. It was a fun children's show. Uh -huh. At the end of it, she always had the magic mirror, and she would name off about twenty names at least, just saying hi to kids. Wonderful, huh? And it was just fun watching that. I, mean, I was always bummed out. Mm -hmm. They had, they had, my a, name. They had uh, where the kids would come on, 
in their regular play clothes, and then they would have one day where they the kids would all dress up really yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, my sister, my mom didn't know, and she brought my sister in all dressed up, and the other kids had the play clothes on. Oh yeah. yeah. But romper room that was so fun. But uh, then as more children's songs, e songs shows evolved, mm -hmm. they started getting more modern by the time Mr. Rogers <coughs> came out. And um, the Captain Kangaroo ran for almost 30 years on television. That mm -hmm. was my favorite when I was a kid. Yeah, they had a song that went something like this. Um, it was something like uh -huh. that. They had a theme song like that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And it was fun. It was, and they had these characters like Mr. Green Jeans. You remember mm. that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he can't wear these overalls. So. And he was like this uh, school teacher type that just they just loved kids and mm -hmm. they spoke with kids. But if I had to pick a children's show, I would probably pick Mrs. Piggle Wiggle mm -hmm. myself personally, mm -hmm. because it was mm -hmm. always fun. Oh, and speaking of talking tree, you know that that tuna cake. They had the hot sauce on the episode I was talking about. Yeah. Well, nobody liked it, but the tree got mad because the tree liked it. <laughs> so, but they didn't think to give it to the tree. Mrs. Mm -hmm. Pigglewiggle didn't think to give that cake, so they threw the cake out, right? Because it was bad. <laughs> that tree's moping around. <sighs> What's wrong, Howard? You didn't bother to ask me if I wanted that cake. <laughs> that tree, that was his tree's favorite cake, so right, she right. makes it up to the tree. It, it was just, just a fun show. In fact, all those children's shows mm -hmm. were fun, so... I don't know if there is a best children's show. I just think yeah, it's yeah. Uh, whatever you like. Well, um, Mr. Rogers. He was, well, that was good, too. Was so it was okay. I watched it many times. It really wasn't my cup of tea, you know. It was almost more like a, was a child psychiatrist or psychologist and you were in 30 minutes of a child psychology session. It just kind of, it was kind of not really uncomfortable. It just, it just wasn't my cup of tea, you know. I, I just thought he was so kind. Is he still on the air? Do they have him in reruns or yeah. not? Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, but um, this might interest you. Fred Rogers, the actor that played Mr. Rogers, mm -hmm. he was an ordained minister. In yeah, Christ. I know that. Yeah. yeah. And I know he had a psych psychological side to it, mm -hmm. but it made sense a lot of those episodes. Like, they had this one episode that I happened to see where we were teaching children about self-esteem and mm -hmm. loving themselves, and, and I thought that was cool. Yeah, yeah. And then they did some really crazy stuff on oh, there. Yeah. Like, they, they one time they had this episode where they went to this trumpet factory, mm -hmm. and they were showing how they made trumpets, and they were bending metal in this factory mm -hmm. for real. That went to Marcellus on this episode up there testing these little horns. And I thought that was cute. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, Mr. Rogers had all these fun characters like King Fry. Oh, I remember that. Oh, yeah. She was. oh yeah. I see, like that. It, it went something like this. Um, if I, so, so, I remember. I think the last time I saw Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, I was about... 16. It was something like that, you know, that they, they yeah. had to... I was about 16 years old and my nieces were over, you know, and such. But I had just been to the dentist and it was really groggy from, you know, the dental thing and the it was laughing gas. Uh -huh. And I was just sitting there kind of in a stupor after the laughing gas and the Novocaine <laughs> and after the whole thing we all going to the dentist and just sitting there watching King Fred and, you know, Mr. Rogers' neighbor just kind of passed, almost passed out, just, you know... Wow, that was the last time I think I saw Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Thankfully, one good thing, I haven't needed a dentist. My teeth have been pretty healthy, I thank the Lord, but I have not e needed a dentist in so long, thankfully, and I hate dentists. I hate oh, dentistry. Oh, I hate going to the dentist. Ugh, I hate going to the dentist. Oh. But if you have to go, you have to go. It was like, ugh, you know. Yeah, I hated going to the dentist as a kid, too. Oh. That was fun. Having your teeth cleaned, I just thought I was going to throw up. I just horrible. Just the, the dentist just wasn't very nice to me. It just wasn't just, you know, it's just, ugh. And as always, some of the Novocaine didn't work, and it was always pain, especially if they were drilling. They're like, oh! Uh -huh. And my eyes would light up. It was like, oh, it was just, ugh. Yeah, well, those weren't fun days. No, they were not Canals fun. and things like that. It's not fun. But anyway, getting back to children's shows, they had a lot of children's shows in the past, and probably more now. 
And I, I make no secret, I don't care for the children's shows that are out there today. Mm -hmm. I, I like last week, we talked about that white dog. That, yeah, yeah. That, that, what and is that's that? even, what's the name um, of that? Family Guy. Oh, that's just the worst cartoon. Yeah, and it's not even for kids, it's more for adults, oh, really. I just yeah. don't think it's funny. I don't think no, it's any not. of those, those, that whole thing, starting with The Simpsons up. Yeah. I, I could live without well, all I that. Think, well, I like The Simpsons, but, but only for adults. Yeah. Yeah, The Simpsons I like, but, but not the other. But you a 10-year-old going to be wanting to watch that, and they just had some yeah. material that I thought was very inappropriate. True. They were like educational, like... Uh, mm -hmm. No, they taught uh, d uh, kids how to theme. be disrespectful to it. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just very... I find that family guy in all those shows is so dysfunctional. Yeah, well, there's one... I don't find anything uh, funny about that at all, but... There's one, and I've forgotten the name of it. For some reason, and um, I, 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 it's lost on me, but it was a horrible uh, cartoon for adults. It was a cartoon for adults about these horrible kids, and I've forgotten the name of it. Oh, I went... Well, you'll have to save that thought for the second show, because it's time to wind down. Yes. Some time just went by. And what we could do is we could just talk about television on the second show. That's Let's a good idea. That. I want to talk about something on the second show. Sure. You, we can do that. Okay. We're, we're just gonna let's just close this show because we're running out of time here. Anyway, um, we're glad we had Steve here with us in ASAP Cafe, and of course Steve had to leave, and uh, he wrote that beautiful composition, yes. and we're glad he played. So, any final words you want to say, Teresa, for this show before oh. we go to the next one? Oh, happy birthday to my cousin Dan! It was his birthday on the twenty-sixth. Okay. And I love him. Dearly, and I hope he watches this show. Mm -hmm. I can't miss the nut there. Let me do it again. All right, well, Dan, I don't know you, but happy fireman. birthday. So we have Teresa Tuigo here, and then we're going to be doing a second taping in a while and a faction of our aging rocker Emmett. So happy birthday. He's your niece? Uh, My cousin. Your cousin? Yeah. So that's a good way to end the show. We'll just yeah, that's a lot of it. So until our next show, ladies and gentlemen, Maranatha. Mm -hmm. I remember that awful cartoon, and we'll talk about that on the second show. I rem finally remember the name of it. Yeah. Hold that thought. So anyway, you guys should make yourself at home. I'll uh, set everything up, and we'll do the second show. Fascinating. For this show, if the yep. Okay, so I can get up and go to the bathroom. You didn't eat your treats.